Dental Association says there isn't, but some of its members say there is and have stopped using it. It is a filling, a silver amalgam filling, the dentist's filling of choice for more than a century. More than 100 million of them were put into American mouths last year. What you probably don't know is that these so-called silver fillings are 50% mercury, and mercury is more poisonous than lead or even arsenic. Because it's been around so long and because it was assumed that the mercury was made stable when mixed with other metals, amalgam fillings were never tested for safety, one of those remedies that the Food and Drug Administration automatically approved. But now a growing number of scientists, doctors, and dentists are saying silver amalgams should be banned. Open wide. Last summer, the EPA banned mercury from indoor latex paint because of mercury vapor. The vapor level in this patient's mouth after chewing for 10 minutes is 92 times higher than the mercury vapor level in a newly painted room, three times higher than the U.S. government allows in the workplace. This is a silver amalgam filling. It is made of silver, copper, tin, and zinc, and mercury. Half of it is mercury. No specific disease has yet been directly linked to mercury from fillings, but now a number of medical schools are looking at the relationship between mercury vapor in the mouth and a whole variety of diseases. Alzheimer's, arthritis, and colitis have all been linked to mercury poisoning. Mercury in the workplace has produced kidney damage, brain damage, birth defects, and symptoms of multiple sclerosis. There is no safe threshold for mercury exposure. None. And there isn't someone somewhere who may not have a very violent reaction even to the lowest amounts of mercury. Dr. Murray Vimy is a scientific consultant to the World Health Organization's Committee on Mercury in the Environment. He's a researcher at the University of Calgary Medical School, and he's a dentist. He got rid of mercury in his own practice eight years ago when he learned that mercury vapor routinely escapes from amalgam fillings. When I measured mercury coming off of fillings, that was reasonable doubt in my mind. It was enough reasonable doubt that I made a clinical decision for my patients to stop using it. You will get some mercury vapor. There's no doubt about that in the... Dr. Heber Simmons speaks for the American Dental Association. Even though more and more American dentists have serious doubts about amalgam, the ADA, which sets standards and approves products, says it is perfectly safe. Up until seven years ago, the ADA said no vapor at all was released from fillings. But the amounts that we're seeing are far below any level that could cause a problem. And the levels that we're seeing are simply not clinically significant. So you can see that there is a constant release of mercury well, we vapor. Don't, we don't dispute that at all. But, th but the amount that is being released when you chew is such of a small amount and a minuscule amount that it is not going to cause a problem. This issue is chronic exposure, low dose, to a heavy metal. And our laboratory is the entire human population in the Western world who's had amalgams. And no one has ever really looked at that aspect of mercury exposure. A great deal is known about acute exposures, one time, two time, large exposures. But this is something that people have day after day after day. And we're just at the beginning of that trail of investigations. Dr. Vimy took a mercury test of the mercury vapor in my mouth, and at that point it was the highest of anybody he'd tested. I had 10 teeth with massive mercury fillings in them. and. Uh, as he said at the time, if I was a building, I would have been condemned. <laughs> the, the, the reading was so high. Faye Doris and her husband are patients of Dr. Vimy. She was crippled by arthritis, suffered from fatigue, colitis, and memory loss. Her doctor told her back in 1985, at the age of 35, that within six months, she'd be confined to a wheelchair. After reading about a connection between mercury and arthritis, Dave Doris talked to Dr. Vimy about removing his wife's fillings. And I said, go ahead and do it. What have we got to lose? The prognosis is she's going to be in a wheelchair by Christmas for the rest of her life, which was scary for me. I was mercury-free, I think, by the 21st of August of that year. And three, within three weeks later, I didn't have to use a cane, and all my symptoms started going away. I had more energy. My tremor stopped in my hands. I could do things again. It was just marvelous. And noticeably, the swelling on the joints of her hands, 
uh, started to go down. But the biggest thing was it wasn't painful on her feet to walk. And have, have, have any of those symptoms returned? On the whole, I'd say 95% of it is gone away. That's clinical evidence. That's not scientific evidence. But clinical evidence is where science has to start. Sci sci science starts with observation. The kind of evidence Dr. Vimy is talking about is what scientists call anecdotal, reports of recoveries that have not been monitored under strict laboratory conditions. There are thousands of anecdotal stories all over Europe and the United States. This group in Illinois reported relief from symptoms of manic depression, chronic fatigue, and migraine headaches, from multiple sclerosis and anemia. Last May, Nancy Yost from San Jose was told by her doctors that she had multiple sclerosis. It was confirmed by magnetic resonance imaging, an MRI scan, incurable. She'd worked in the dental industry and heard reports that some patients showed improvement after having amalgam fillings removed. And I was cautioned by the doctors always, you've got your hopes too high. Get real here. <laughs> If you are better, it's going to be a long period. As a last resort, she had her five amalgam fillings taken out. She left the dentist's office using a cane and leaning heavily on the arm of a friend. The next morning when I presented to my physician, I threw my cane at him and said, look. It and was that quick? It was that quick. What did your doctor say? Well, he was incredulous. He knew it would be of benefit, but no one expected it would be instantaneous or so dramatic. My voice came back. My ability to walk and hold a pencil came back. It was there. That night, I ended up going to dinner in San Francisco and actually dancing two dances. And I hadn't been walking since May. Next day. Friday evening. The next day. Are there any lingering effects? Yes. Yes. There are lingering effects if I get overtired or cold or under a great deal of stress. The National Multiple Sclerosis Society states that this is a cruel hoax on these people to take the fillings out in hopes it's going to cure the MS. And it does not happen in those cases. It simply does not happen. I think it's a rather strange position to take because according to all the doctors I talked to, they said multiple sclerosis has... ...between humans and animals. Doctors Vimy and Laura Scheider have joined a growing number of dentists, doctors, and scientists calling for a total ban on amalgam. In this country, a ban would have to be imposed by the Food and Drug Administration. So what about the FDA? What does it have to say about silver fillings? Well, it refuses to be interviewed. Surprising, given the widespread use of the product and the confidence that Americans, indeed most of the world, has in both its caution and its expertise. The FDA did send us a brief statement. It says, the Canadian sheep study raises some preliminary questions about the safety of dental amalgams, but leaves important questions unanswered. The FDA remains confident in the value of amalgams in dental care. It says it could ban them, but it won't do that until it is satisfied there is a health risk. Why has the FDA been so slow? Well, that's interesting because what you see when you look into the FDA, you see that the FDA's dental division has been platooned full of American Dental Association people. The entire committee is made up of people from dental institutions, uh, practicing dentists and people from the dental industry who make the dental materials. There is virtually no medical input or basic science input from medicine on that committee. And so anything the ADA wants, they pretty much can get through the FDA. That's what's called effective lobbying. The dental trade industry, the American Dental Association, and the dentists of this country, their primary industry is doing what is best for that patient and to make sure it is safe and effective and it does the job at hand. You got to remember, Marley, I work with this material every single day. I still place it in patients' teeth. I'm a pediatric dentist in Jackson, Mississippi. Do you have any scientific evidence that it is safe? Absolutely. There are numerous studies that have been done. 
But the ADA's top scientist who was present at the interview says the effects of mercury vapor on health have not yet been well researched. There is barely a scientist who would disagree. Louise Herbeck was disabled and in acute pain for nine years. Her doctor had diagnosed multiple sclerosis. She had her fillings removed after seeing a report on amalgam on the CBS Evening News. Within six months, almost all her symptoms were gone. Her doctor says the most likely explanation was spontaneous remission. I wasn't just sitting here and one day, oh, suddenly it was all gone. I did something specific that made it happen. And that is by removing the mercury from my teeth. Louise has become an activist on the amalgam issue. She wants the law changed. I think dentists should be made to tell the people what they're putting in our mouth. If you get a prescription drug now from a doctor, you have the right to know what that drug is and what its side effects are. That right to know is called informed consent. But the ADA is fighting it, urging state dental associations to fight any legislation to make dentists explain the possible risks. If there's no risk involved, why do you have to have informed consent? We do not mind talking about it at all. We're delighted to talk about it. We're fully but open. don't volunteer it. That's what you're telling your people. Oh, no, I'm not volunteering it. I mean, I'm not saying that. I did not say that at all. You're putting words in my mouth now. You tell people about this controversy about amalgam? If they ask, I will tell them. I do <laughs> not go out and volunteer. Absolutely right. Because in my opinion, there is no risk involved with it. What I don't understand, though, is why you're so tough on dentists who might say, you know, I'm not comfortable with this mercury stuff. You cut him off at the knees if he even suggests it. No, we don't. We just say that it's not backed up by science, scientific evidence. And you regard it as unethical behavior. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's called cutting him off at the knees. No, not in my terminology, it's not. You may think it is, but it's not. You spread the word that, you, that, that your local dentist is unethical. How many people are going to go to him? I can't answer that question. I, I, just, know, I have no answer for but that. But you know the answer. But I can say this. I look upon it as us trying to uphold the scientific standards on which this profession is based. If you took amalgam off the market tomorrow, a good 40% of the American dentists who belong to the American Dental Associations would have to be retrained. Because in their practices, the prime thing that they use is dental amalgam. As consumers, Molly, we have to protect ourselves. We can't wait until the last I is dotted and the last T is crossed. The evidence is here. And we should say, if it's not reasonably safe, if there's a question, I'm not going to put it in my child's mouth. So what are you saying to the rest of us? Go out and have your fillings removed? Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. Not everyone involved in the call for a ban on amalgam feels Dr. Zam's sense of urgency. Dentists who've stopped using amalgam suggest careful consultation before having any fillings removed. Some of them, still members of the American Dental Association, have filed a class action suit against their own organization, charging it has fraudulently misrepresented the amalgam issue to its members. It's been suggested that if the ADA did concede there were risks, dentists might be sued by their patients. The FDA will review the safety of amalgam fillings in March. Just last month in Sweden, the government passed a law allowing its citizens to have amalgam fillings removed under the National Dental Plan. And in Germany, legislation to ban amalgam has been introduced. A total ban is expected within the year.